What's up guys, it's Kelly and today I've got another swatch and review for you. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss out on new videos and let's get started. So today I am sharing with you guys swatches of a new collection from Color Club which is called Parisian Garden. So this is one of their new spring 2021 collections. I've actually got another one as well, their Jersey Girl collection, but I'm gonna do a separate video on that because the polishes are very different. <laughs> so yeah, if you haven't heard of Color Club before, they are a mainstream nail polish brand that is vegan and cruelty free. They also have the wide flat brush that I love, which also has like a rounded tip. So it makes it super easy for application, especially near the cuticles. So I definitely love that. But yeah, we may as well just jump right into these shades. We've got six brand new colors. They're all kind of leaning pastel, but they're a little bit more saturated than you would normally see for these types of polishes. So I'm actually really excited about them. So yeah, we'll just get into it. Roll footage. As always, I am using base coat underneath all of my swatches just to protect my natural nail and prevent any stains. Today I am switching it up, bringing back an old favorite. I've got the Cuccio base coat on for this review, so I'll link it in the description. So first up, we've got the shade Lily in Paris, and this is a really beautiful periwinkle cream shade, and you can already see on the first coat, I was actually really impressed with the formula and coverage of these. So it wasn't fully opaque in the first coat, but it didn't have that sort of milky feeling. So I knew I was gonna be able to get that full coverage in the second coat and I did. The color looks absolutely stunning on. I really actually enjoyed this formula. It felt pretty thin, so it didn't feel like it was particularly thick on the nails. Honestly, if you have really long nails and you need to do a third coat, I feel like it doesn't even feel like it would be three coats on the nail because the formula is thin, but the opacity payoff is really incredible considering how it doesn't feel like thick on the nails, if that makes any sense. Next up, we have the shade Merci Beau Bleu. I'll apologize to your ears in advance for butchering some French pronunciations, but I am sorry about that. This color, however, is absolutely stunning. It's like this really beautiful aqua turquoise cream shade, and it leans almost neon, which I think is so fun and bright and summery. The color is incredible. The payoff, again, just really good opacity. It wasn't opaque on that first coat, but I could sense that it was nearing full opacity already, so the second coat just gave me that perfect coverage, and it just really looks so bright and fun on the nails. This is a shade that I enjoy wearing in the spring and the summer. Next up, we have the shade Jardin Green. And let me tell you, I was so excited to see not one, but two completely green polishes in this collection. Plus that really beautiful seafoam green kind of color that we just reviewed that I guess is technically more of a blue. But yeah, I love a good green nail polish and this one is absolutely stunning. It kind of has this light dustiness to it, but it's this perfect leafy spring green that looks so gorgeous on the nails. Two coats gave me perfect coverage and I am just absolutely obsessed with it. It's really beautiful color. Even though it's like a basic shade, for some reason that dustiness kind of feels unique to me. Next up we have the other green in this collection. This one is called Olive Paris and as you could guess it's sort of an olive green. I would say it feels more like a pastel olive if there is such a thing. It definitely has that light soft vibe to it and again just really amazing opacity and formula on these. I will admit I don't use Color Club polishes that that often, but I have to say the experience of painting these ones on has really made me enjoy the brand a lot more, so I feel like I'm definitely going to be reaching for them a lot more often. I was just really impressed with how they applied. The final two shades of the collection are more of the typical springy pastel shades that I expected to see from these. This one is called La Vie en Rose, and it is a really beautiful, soft, peachy pastel shade that again kind of leans a little touch neon, so it's just a little bit more bright and saturated than I expected to see in a spring collection. I gotta say, this spring colors has really wowed me. All of these shades are absolutely beautiful and they pair so nicely with each other and it's just not at all what I expected from like a soft Parisian garden collection. It's just so bright and beautiful. It almost feels even a little summery to me. So yeah, here's this one in two coats. Perfect coverage. I was really impressed because I thought it was going to be a three coater, but nope, it was a two coater on me. And last but not least, we have the final shade which is called bouquet of the day and this one is your really bright almost neon pastel pink cream shade it definitely leans a little bit cool toned almost white but you can definitely see that pink in there and it does have that very, very slight neon tinge to it, so it's not that intense, but it's saturated enough that it kind of looks 
really bright on the nails. I don't know how to explain that very well, to be honest. But again, I was impressed with the coverage of this. I was not expecting it to be a two coater, but it did give me full coverage in those two coats and it looked really beautiful on. It's like that really bright, almost Pepto pink color. I'd say this one is a little lighter than Pepto pink though. So here are all of these shades together. Honestly, from the promo pictures and in the bottle, I was not expecting to love these as much as I did. You can see, they, I mean, I don't know why I keep calling them pastel. They're really not. They're so bright and fun and beautiful. I love they've got like the two blues, the two pinky colors, the two green colors. They all just go so well together. I can already see so much flowery nail art with them, but I absolutely love these formulas on their own as well. So you'll definitely be seeing me wearing a lot of these. So yeah, those are the polishes. And I have to say, I am surprised at how much I love these. I usually don't go for like the spring pastel -y kind of shades, but this collection really speaks to me for three main reasons. One, I feel like these shades are a lot more bright and saturated than I normally see pastel kind of colors. I feel like they actually aren't necessarily pastel. They just kind of lean that way, but they're still bright enough that they just work for any time. Two, because there's a lot of green in here and I love a good green nail polish. I always say there aren't enough green nail polishes in the world, so I was very excited to see two and a half, I guess. And reason number three is because the formulas were just shockingly good. I was absolutely not expecting these to be so opaque and creamy and really workable. I mean, I don't review Color Club that often, but I feel like for me it tends to be hit or miss. Sometimes their lighter colors just take so many coats for full opacity for me, but I have to say I was just totally blown away by these formulas. It was just such a good polishing experience, so I really enjoyed them. So yeah, these polishes come in 15 milliliter bottles. I get mine from HB Beauty Bar where they retail for $7 USD, and you can also use the discount code KELLY to get 22% off your order there, so I will link all of that down below so you guys can check that out. If you you are interested. But yeah, I'm curious to hear what you guys think of these. Are you into this collection? Are you not? If so, or if not, let me know why. We can chat about it in the comments. If you enjoy my swatch and review videos, please give this one a thumbs up. It lets me know I'm doing a good job. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, please consider subscribing. I put out new videos every Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday. Huge shout out to my cosmic admirals on Patreon, Amanda M, Braxton Scott, and Rainbow J. I really appreciate your support, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye. Today's fun fact question comes from Patreon supporter Miranda, who would like to be known from now on as Kelly's first Twitch follower. If you guys don't know, I am on Twitch now. I stream me playing Pokemon. I'll link that in the description if you guys are interested. Kelly's first Twitch follower wants to know if you could experience any movie or series for the first time again, which would it be and why? I feel like I talk about Avatar The Last Airbender a lot, but I really gotta say that would be the one that I would love to experience again for the first time. I actually just recently rewatched watched it. Like that was my first ever rewatch because I had only ever seen the series once when it was coming out and I loved it that much that it, it stuck with me all these years. Like I actually, I, th I must have been like 15 or 16 when that show was first airing or even younger maybe, I don't remember. But anyway, uh, yeah, honestly, I just feel like that is such a powerful series and I know it's for kids, but honestly, as an adult, the experience of watching it was so incredible. I would love to just experience that for the first time over and over again. Although I will say there is a lot of joy in watching it again, having seen it before, because you kind of have this relief of knowing what happens. Because sometimes when I'm experiencing something for the first time, I feel like I, I almost get stressed out from not knowing. I told you guys actually a few years ago that I never rewatch movies or reread books, and that has changed significantly in the past year. I find myself going back to stuff a lot now because I always notice, or now I notice, that when I'm experiencing something for the first time, I kind of tend to rush through it because I'm so eager to know the end and I'm so eager to know what happens that I kind of miss some of the details along the way. So I'm noticing a lot, especially in like rereading stuff, I'm noticing a lot of details that I never got to really enjoy before. So now I'm kind of like experiencing stuff for the first time, kind of rushing through it so that I can experience it again. So it's kind of funny that I seem to really enjoy the opposite of what this question is. But yeah, I would still, I would still choose Avatar The Last Airbender because I think that's just a very powerful experience. Experience. But yeah, that's it. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!